I'd like to start with a story that I heard, goodness gracious, 25 years ago, about there. Um, I remember where I was when I first heard this story. I thought it was so funny. It was, it's a story about a woman. She was, uh, she was 31 years old when she finally met her husband and married. And uh, her friends thought maybe she would never get married. She just waited so long. And, uh, but when you ask her, she never had a concern ever. She said, I knew that when I was ready, I had to just seek God in prayer. And they said, well, what, what did you say? What was your prayer like? She goes, well, I grabbed a, man, a pair of man's pants. I put them over the bottom of my bed. And every night before I went to bed, I knelt and I prayed this prayer. Heavenly Father, hear my prayer. Grant it if you can. I've hung a pair of trousers here. Please fill them with a man. <laughs> now you laugh at that, but I want you to know it works. Uh, because, you know, I didn't get married until I was 35. And about when I was 30, I was starting to get a little bit concerned that maybe I wasn't going to be married. So I grabbed a bikini and put it at the bottom <laughs> of my bed. And I prayed a very similar prayer. And I'm telling you, it works. It works. Some of us have prayed, though, haven't we? We've prayed and we've sought God maybe for weeks or, or months or even years. And, and God never answered your prayer. And you began to wonder. And maybe you even were like me at times of my life. And, and you see a real need and you're seeking God and nothing's happening. And so you question God. You say, God, why aren't you doing something? I need you right now. Where are you? Why aren't you doing something? And, and many of us have been there. And... Um, We've had those feelings. And so I wanted to share a very important truth with you that you can take with you today, an important truth that will help you the next time you come into that place where you're beginning to question God, why aren't you doing something? It's simple truth. Here it is. With God, time waiting isn't time wasted. With God, time waiting isn't time wasted. And, and that is sure true for me. I was 35 when I met Melissa. I was 35 when we were married, and, uh, and God used all of that time up to that point to prepare me so I'd be a better husband, so I'd be a better, a better father to the kids we would have. And when I think about that concept, that truth, a Bible story comes to mind, one that we're all very familiar with. I'd like us to look at it this morning. If you could, grab your Bibles and open up to John chapter 11. You can imagine that Jesus was one who had lots of friends. Uh, and in fact, the Bible tells us he was a friend of sinners. Well, in John chapter 11, we meet three friends, uh, some brothers and sisters, two sisters and a brother, Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. And Jesus would often stop by their house on his way to Jerusalem, he and the disciples, and he knew that they would treat him right. And they became really close friends. And uh, he knew he could always get a meal there. If they needed a place to stay, they would always provide that for him. And in John chapter 11, Lazarus, we see, becomes sick. This friend of Jesus becomes very ill. Look with me, John chapter 11, verse 3. It says, the sisters sent word to Jesus, Lord, the one you love is sick. Now, this, this kind of helps us understand the kind of relationship Jesus had with Lazarus. They were close friends. Lord, the one you love, they knew that Jesus would instantly know who he was talking about. He's sick. They wouldn't do this unless the need was very real. A day or so passes, they're expecting Jesus at any minute, but he doesn't show. Lazarus is getting worse. They're in a situation like we just spoke of. God, why aren't you doing something? Jesus, why aren't you doing something? And they're waiting and waiting, and it sure feels like time is wasting because he's getting sicker and sicker. And we learned something here that's real important, something that is in your notes. Why is time waiting, not time wasted? Number one, just because, just because God hasn't answered you doesn't mean he's refusing to. Please remember that. Just because God hasn't answered you doesn't mean he's refusing to. It might feel like it, but it doesn't mean that he's refusing to. Look at verse 4. Jesus receives word about Lazarus' illness. When he heard this, it says, Jesus said, This sickness will not end in death. It's for God's glory so that God's Son may be glorified through it. Last week, I mentioned that God is in control of everything, and there's a theological word for that. The word is sovereign. 
It doesn't mean that God causes bad things to happen. No, of course not. God is a good God. But in the end, he will use bad things. He'll use them uh, to achieve his good and righteous purposes. So he doesn't cause bad things, but he is sovereign. He'll use bad things for his purposes. And we see it right here. God didn't cause Lazarus to get sick. God didn't cause him to die. But God will use it for his righteous cause. And Jesus says, all this is for God's glory so that the Son, so that Jesus may be glorified. And when Jesus is glorified, what happens? People are drawn to him. People believe they trust him. They have faith. And new life comes from it. Just because God hasn't answered your prayer, it doesn't mean he's refusing to. God always has the best interest of his children at heart. And sometimes, sometimes we, don't, we don't get what we're praying for because his timing's not right. The timing for what we're requesting is not right. I prayed for a wife in my 20s, and she didn't come. The timing wasn't right. God was still working. But just because he has an answer in your prayer, it doesn't mean he's refusing to, okay? Which brings us to number two. Sometimes God is doing something in you before he does something for you. Sometimes he does something in you before he does something for you. Let me ask you, what, what does God want more than anything with regard to us? What does he want more than anything? He wants our hearts, You got somebody's heart, they're going to be a fully devoted follower, and that's what Jesus wants. It's all about relationship with Jesus. He wants us to know him. He wants us to to grow in our intimacy and our closeness with him. He wants us to grow so that we're obedient and loyal to him, to know, to grow, and to go. It's all about relationship, him with us, us with him and us with others. And that can't happen. That just can't happen unless we have faith, unless we've placed our trust in Jesus Christ. And when we're waiting for God in those moments, we're seeking him and things aren't coming together and we're, we're waiting and we're waiting, hey, it's an opportunity for us to go deeper with him. It's an opportunity for us to pray, to get into his word and dive deeper. It's an opportunity for us to, to draw closer in dependence in humility, sharing our need. Because often God is doing something in you rather than something for you. Building your faith, building your trust, building your obedience. I want you to imagine if God were to just be the kind of God that just gave us everything we wanted. We would go to him, we would seek him in prayer and ask him for something we desired, and there it is. You know, and everything we desired, that's the way it always was. Imagine that. Just imagine that happening. Would that draw us closer to him? Would that allow the relationship to be that much tighter and deeper? I don't think so. And the reason I say that is because we see parents do this sometimes with their kids, don't we? We see them provide anything their kids want, whatever it is, new car, whatever it is, they always get whatever they want. And what happens? Those kids become spoiled. They, those kids become demanding. They get an entitled attitude and the relationship with the, those kids and their mom and dad gets soured and it just goes south. I learned something several years back. I've always remembered it. God's not about making us happy. He's about making us healthy. And he knows that if he just gives us everything we want, we're not going to be healthy. No more than a child is in in real uh, physical life. See, sometimes God is waiting because he wants us healthier on the inside. He's doing something in us before he's going to do something for us. Now, some might say, but you don't understand what I'm asking for. I'm not asking for the world. I'm not asking for, for everything. I'm just asking for one single thing. With all the love, let me tell you something. Above anything on this earth, what we need is more Jesus. I'm serious. Think about this. We need, who is Jesus? He is the way, the truth. He's life. We need more truth. We need, we need more love. We need more grace. We need more mercy. We need more power. Why? So that we can live out this relationship he's called us to. Live out. 
We need more Jesus is what we need. We need more Jesus at work. We need more Jesus in our families. We need more Jesus in our lives. Jesus came and what did he do? He healed and he loved and he set people free. He brought new life. That's exactly what we need in our communities, in our families, in this country, in the world. We need love. We need healing. We need new life. We need truth. We need more Jesus is what we need. And so sometimes in the waiting, God's doing something in us. He's drawing us to him. He's teaching us his truth. He's teaching us healthy dependence and humility and trust. He's doing something in you before he does something for you. Back to John chapter 11. Mary and Martha are still waiting on Jesus. They're certain he's going to be there. They know him, right? Lazarus is getting worse. And then Lazarus dies. And this is tough because Mary and Martha depend on Lazarus. It's a male-dominant culture. We don't know anything about their parents. We get the idea that it's probably just them. They need him to sustain their existence to a degree. And this is a huge loss, not only for the family but for the community. And the worst thing about it is he didn't have to die. They knew someone who could bring healing, but he didn't show up. Where was Jesus at all of this? What was he doing? You know, this is is so surprising. You know what Jesus was doing when he didn't deal with Lazarus? When he didn't come and minister to Lazarus and his family? Jesus was ministering to other families. Jesus was ministering to other people instead of ministering to to Lazarus. But why? Why? Why didn't he come and and help Lazarus, the one he loved? And we question that sometimes, don't we? They prepare Lazarus' body. They put him in a tomb. Jesus still doesn't come. A day passes. Another day passes. Four days pass. Jesus finally arrives. Now, there's something we need to know about first century Israelites, they believed that when you died, your spirit left your body. We know this from the rabbi's writings. They believed that the spirit left the body and hovered above the body. You couldn't see it, but they believed that's where it was. And it would be there for three days. By the fourth day, the decompositions fully engaged and the spirit would leave, never to return to the body. That's what they believed. So Jesus arrives on the fourth day. Remotest possibility that a miracle could happen is now gone. Look at verse 21. Lord, Martha said to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. And there's no doubt she was in tears saying those words. She's four days into the mourning process. She's emotionally exhausted. It went about a week in those days. She's hurt. The solution, she knew, but he didn't show up. And now, day four, it's impossible. Her brother's gone until they see each other in eternity. Look at verse 22. But I know even now, catch that, I know even now, God will give you whatever you ask. She's hurt. Her brother says there, my brother would not have died if you hadn't been here, but I know even now. Now, don't misunderstand this. She does not believe Jesus can resurrect her brother. In fact, verse uh, 23 says as much. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha answered, I know he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. She doesn't believe Jesus is going to raise him. So she believes her brother will be resurrected, but it'll be a long time from this point. Still, she knows even now she trusts in Jesus. Sometimes we, we, get, we don't get the answer that we want, and we start questioning God. It affects maybe even our faith negatively, and, uh, you know, a, a week goes by, a month goes by, and, and we can despair we have to trust in the goodness of God because all that's left is despair. We have to realize based upon God's word, based upon the life of Jesus, God is faithful, God is true, God is good, God is all-powerful, which brings us to number three. 
sometimes God doesn't do what we want because he wants something better. Sometimes God doesn't do what we want because he wants something better. I remember uh, before I was in the ministry, I was a freshman at Miami University in Ohio, and um, I fell in love with this girl in my freshman class. And, um, I mean, I had never felt this way up to that point about somebody. I was just head over heels. I thought that it wasn't mutual. I never did tell her. (laughs) But I really felt confident that it wasn't mutual. And deep inside, I knew knew it wasn't right. She was Catholic. I was headed for ministry. I wanted to work full-time in ministry. She had a very different view of faith. She had a very different view of life and how faith works with life than I did. I'm headed to ministry. She was headed a very different direction. But I was in love. At least I thought I was. What I didn't know in my very limited temporal perspective was that God had somebody else better for me. He knew that someday I was going to be the pastor, even the First Baptist Church Pekin. And, and he knew a young lady at that time who was just graduating high school that would be perfect for me. She not only could handle being a pastor's wife, but she would love me in and through being a pastor of a church. And, and he knew that she would love me so much more than that college girl ever could. Sometimes God doesn't do what we want because he wants to do something better. And I see it now. I see it totally. Back to John chapter 11, Jesus could, he could arrive early, he could have came into town when he was still sick, Lazarus, and he, he could have healed Lazarus, and it would have been beautiful, right? It would have been wonderful. Everybody would have celebrated, they would acknowledge Jesus as somebody special, that he had the ability to heal the sick, but most of them knew that. Instead, Jesus waited four days after the fact, and when there was no hope, when there was nothing they could do, Jesus does something even better. He, he raises Lazarus back to life. Martha says, I know he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. And Jesus says, look at verse 25, I am the resurrection and the life. (laughs) Jesus, I know there's coming a day that my brother will raise from the dead. Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. If you believe in me, though though the person dies, they'll live. Martha's still not getting it. The whole thing here is Jesus wants to make a point. He's nearing the end of his ministry. Within weeks, he most likely is arrested, and then he he gets crucified, and he wants to make a point. Martha and and some others there that are believers, they, they believe in Jesus, but they believe in a resurrection at the last day. They believe that it's in the future. And Jesus here in John chapter 11, he lets it be known that the resurrection isn't an event in the future. The resurrection is a person that's right here in the present. And he says, I am the resurrection and the life. Jesus Jesus says, with me, death no longer has a final say. Jesus says, I have come to put to death death, to rob it of its power for all who believe and trust in me. And and I'm telling you right now, I believe there are people here this morning that need to hear that truth. Jesus wants to resurrect something in your life. He wants to bring new life to you. Maybe it's a marriage that's grown old and stale, and God's desire is to resurrect it to new life. Maybe it's a dream that you had years ago, and you think it's dead in God, and God wants to resurrect it to new life. Maybe the resurrection is you, and you're, you're caught up in sin and a life that doesn't honor God, and, and you're, you're as good as dead, spiritually speaking. And God looks at you and he says, I am the resurrection and the life, and he wants to breathe new life into you. Maybe it's an addiction he wants to free you from, a, 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 an addiction to alcohol or drugs or pornography. Maybe it's depression. Maybe he wants to free you from some ha- bad habit to some sin that's entangling you. Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies. Do you need to hear that message this morning? Jesus 
didn't do what Martha wanted. He did something better. They wanted Jesus to heal Lazarus from sickness. Jesus says, no. I'm going to raise him from the dead because I want you and others to know that I am the resurrection and the life. And whoever believes in me, though they be dead, they don't ever have to die spiritually. They can have new life. Because sometimes what we want isn't near as good as what God wants for us. Jesus walks up to the tomb. The tomb that Lazarus' dead body is inside of. And in verse 39, he says, take away the stone. And in verse 42, Jesus prays out loud. Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always heard me, but I said this for the benefit of the people standing here, that they may believe that you sent me. And then in verse 43, it says, Jesus called out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. And Lazarus rose to life from death. With God, time waiting isn't time wasted. Why? Because God doesn't answer He didn't answer their prayers. Him not answering their prayers didn't mean he was refusing to. God wanted to do something in them before he did something for them. And they learned that God doesn't always do what they want because sometimes he does something better. And when we understand that, when we really get it deep in our hearts, time waiting is transformed into a time where we can develop our relationship, our trust, and our dependence on God. It can be transformed into a time of hope and expectancy. But still, still, we're waiting. And waiting is hard. And it's painful. And it hurts. And what do we do? We read more, we pray more, we study, we seek more. And we're like Martha. We just continue to trust in God no matter what. Remember, guys, God is all true. He is all good. He is all faithful. He is all powerful. He not only died for you as we remembered up here, but he also rose from the dead for you. And he's the one that promises you that if you love him, if you trust him with your life, then you are called according to his purposes and he will work everything for good one way or the other. I'm, remembered, I'm reminded of a story uh, by the name of uh, a fellow by the name of uh, Adoniram Judson. Adoniram went to Asia to be a minister, to be a missionary to an unreached people group back in the 1800s. He went there where nobody had ever been. He was there working as hard as he could, his wife, his children, and he wasn't getting much ground taken. He was working, so just a handful of converts. In a matter of eight to ten years, he lost all of the backing from back in the United States. But he stayed anyway because he had a heartbeat for these people. And then his wife got sick and his kids, and they died. And as hard as it was, he just kept working. He was translating, learning their language and translating it into a a New Testament. And then he remarried, and his second wife got sick and died. After years of mission work, he still only had a handful of converts. He was put into prison because the government changed. He would be released and then put in again. And no matter what, he kept working on that New Testament. And then finally he was freed, and he got sick. They took him out to the ocean. They had the idea that the fresh ocean air would, would bring healing to his body. He died. Decades passed. All he had was a handful of converts. Finally, the, the nation came open again, and some people in the United States said, let's send some missionaries. Last person that we, uh, golly, it was decades ago, we sent Adam Judson. He's, he's dead. So they sent a new team to continue the work, 
And guess what they found when they got there? Not a handful of converts. A thriving church of hundreds. And the only Bible they had was the one that he put together while he was in prison and out of prison while his wife was dying, while his children were dying. And I'm Judson never got to see the benefit and the fruit of his work. But he was faithful. He trusted in God no matter what. And because of that, there are thousands to this day that know Jesus because of his faithful serving. Sometimes it doesn't seem like God's hearing our prayers. But when we're faithful and we're trusting in him, he is the one who is true. He is the one who is good. He is the one who is faithful. And he is the one who is all-powerful. Trust him. He will work all things together for good to those who love him and are called according to his purposes. Trust him right now where you are. Let's bow together. Lord God, you are all true. You are completely faithful. And there is no power that can match yours. Lord, I just want to pray right now, Lord, for everyone who's waiting and they're pray, they've prayed and prayed, and they're still waiting. Lord, may your Holy Spirit do a work in their lives. May they continue to seek you. Help them, Lord, to trust you and renew their strength. Lord, I pray that you would reveal to them that their waiting isn't wasted. That you're doing something in them. And in their circumstance, Father, we pray for miracles, we pray for healings. Speak over those people right now and bring healings and miracles. Lord, we pray also that you would forgive us because we do get faint of heart and doubt creeps in. Lord, we pray that you'll do something better beyond anything we could ask or think. With every head still bowed, if you're here this morning and you're hurting and you're waiting and it's hard, you've sought God, I want to encourage you, would you pray with me right now? Just say, God, please help me to trust you. Help me to draw nearer to you. Help me not to give up. You are good. You are true. You are faithful. You are all-powerful. And maybe you're here today and you've either been tempted or you already have. You've blamed God because he wasn't there when you needed him. Sometimes God will allow things to happen in just the right way so that we finally see our need for him, our need to give him all of us. Maybe you're here and you've messed up. You're reaping consequences of your own sin. Oh, can I just plead with you to turn to Jesus? God loves you. He loves you so much he sent Jesus. And Jesus went to the cross and took the punishment of your sin on himself so you could be forgiven. And he says, I am the resurrection and the life. And then after he died, he rose, defeating death and hell and sin for us. And the Bible says, whoever calls on him will be saved. If you're ready, call on him. Repent. Turn from your sin to Jesus. Believe. Trust in him with your life. In fact, you can pray with me right now. Just say, Jesus, I don't understand all this, but I know I need you. Come into my life. I trust you with my life the best I can. Forgive me of my sins. I believe what you did on the cross was for me. I believe you died and rose from the dead for me so I could be forgiven. I accept it. I trust in you right now. Help me move forward. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. 